Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Christmas Eve edition of The Correct Views. And uh, that looks like I have a green beard, so we're going to go ahead and move it down. I also have a Christmas tree, but my, uh, my graphics are actually in the way of the Christmas tree. Um, for those of you that don't celebrate Christmas, feel free to fast forward ahead if you would like. Uh, oh, my. Christmas says, uh, you gotta love the Christmas decorations. Well, as uh, Christelle, our behind the scenes queen, renders the collapsing of said Christmas set, I'm gonna go ahead and hop in with a few facts about the holiday that maybe you didn't know. Um, both of these are uh, one is from hanghanagraph.com, and the other one is equip.org from the Christian Research Institute. And I mention these because I have seen a lot of memes and a lot of strange things lately. That my shopping T-shirt. Um, I've seen a lot of memes that are completely and totally off base, and I figured I would address them because the his the historical facts are what they are, and it doesn't really matter whether or not you're a Christian or not. But the misrepresentation of Christmas and what it is, I think, by a lot of people, has been extant all over the place. And I think if nothing else, thank you, Christelle, it would be good to address some of these. Um, first and foremost is the, the idea that, that, take the Christmas tree, for instance, that it is a pagan symbol, three sides, it's a pagan symbol, and Christians uh, use it, it's a pagan symbol, they shouldn't do it. That's not what happened at all. At the time... Um, much like today, in most of America, uh, Christians get along with non-Christians. Um, well, minus the Crusades, um, that tends to be the case with a lot of uh, different religions, where you know they get along in certain countries for certain periods of time. Well, in the countries of Europe, um, they were they had pagan holidays and had the pagan tree. What the Christians did was decided that it was going to represent. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost as a triangle. And they were going to worship the triune God in it. And they didn't take the pagan symbol. What they did was celebrated with their pagan friends and didn't break their own religion. Because the pagan holidays were first. Yes, we know that. Um, I want to mention some things here. Uh, Ginger asks Hank Hanegraaff in this interview. Um, again, it is a uh, question and answer. Is Christmas a pagan holiday? Mm. With regard to pagan holidays, some religions don't celebrate Christmas or July 4th or anything. As Christians, are these considered pagan holidays? He answers, I think it is a matter of conscience. I think that wonderful Christians have chosen not to celebrate those holidays for particular reasons, but I don't think you want to do it for the wrong reason. Sometimes you have the wrong reasons given. Sometimes that ends up being historical revisionism. As Christians, we ought to be those committed to the truth. The issue here, from a historical standpoint, is simply this, that the holidays were never meant as a means of Christianizing something that is pagan but rather as a means of setting up a rival celebration. Let's pause. Joe Blow over here, he's a friend of mine. And he celebrates a satanic holiday. Is there one I don't know? He celebrates a satanic holiday. I celebrate with him because he is my friend and I want to share a beer with him. However, I can't celebrate a celebration of Satan. So while at his party, he allows me to worship God, and we party at the same place. That is what happened here. So for example, he says, Christmas is not the Christianizing of something that's pagan, but it is a rival celebration intended to communicate the real joy of the world who is Christ, who in his incarnation comes and brings meaning, purpose, and fulfillment to those who know him. That goes a long way in addressing many of the memes that I've seen. I'm going to finish a couple of these, and then I'm going to go on to the regular news, fear not. Um, is Christmas pagan? The Christian and Christmas pagan myths and practices. 
The best arguments against Christmas are the pagan myths and practices they have attached themselves, like so many barnacles on a ship. But you don't just abandon a ship because it's got barnacles on it. You don't need to abandon Christmas because non-Christians non -Christians abuse it. The Christian and Christmas non-violation of biblical principles. Ever hear anybody say, well, the Bible says you can't celebrate Christmas. It says it right there. The Bible neither commands nor condemns Christmas, nor is there any biblical principle violated by the celebration of Christ's birthday. Scripture clearly teaches that anything is permitted as long as it does not violate the biblical principles, and as long as it is done in faith, with love, and in a manner that edifies. And he uses uh, Romans 13.10, among others, to prove it. Um, what day was Jesus born on? Often we are told that celebrating Christ's birthday on December 25th is very wrong for two reasons. The first is that Christ was probably not even born on December 25th. That's probably true. But so what? We don't need to know what day Jesus Christ was actually born on, but what does it really matter? What matters is that we are honoring the birth of the Savior. I already read the uh, pagan festival one, so there you go. Um, perfect for all the people that insist that Christmas is a pagan holiday when it was really a counter-celebration that happened at the same time as a pagan holiday. All right, friends. Uh, Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson, government using TSA to change the amount in bank accounts for its panel. Now, how many times have you people who have listened to this show know that I have begged you all to get out of the sinking boat that is banks? I wrote an entire article on the Media Speaks called How to Live Without Banks, and I did it for a reason. Um, they... They're going to steal the money that you, Mr. Average Person, have in your bank account. They are going to steal it as what's called a bail-in. If you don't know what a bail-in is, look up Cypress Banking, and you will be glued to the rest of the show. Uh, in a nutshell, if you have money in the bank, and they decide that there is a crisis of some kind, then they will take your money out, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Unless, of course, you don't have any money in it. So go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up uh, How to Live Without Banks. A White House review panel reported into the activities of the NSA suggested that the government was using the spy agency to launch cyber attacks against financial institutions and change the amounts held in bank accounts. Well, we were told it was for a bail-in in Cyprus. There's no other reason we'd have to do it. Well, there's some more reasons if it's going to keep coming after your money. You could dumb enough to put it in there. The 300-page report prepared for President Barack Obama by the Review Group on Intelligence and Communications Technology called for the NSA to be stripped of its power to obtain bulk collections of telephone records. Page 221 of the panel report states, one, governments should not use surveillance to steal industry secrets to adv advantage their domestic industry, and two, governments should not use their offensive cyber capabilities to change the amounts held in financial accounts, or otherwise manipulate the financial systems. Trevor Trim, it says, from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, responded to the report by suggesting that the NSA was targeting major financial institutions. There's a tweet here. Um, it says, you know, does the NSA report recommendation imply that the NSA is conducting offensive cyber attacks? I think it definitely leans itself towards that. It says in the aftermath of the Edward Snowden revelations, it was confirmed that the National Security Agency widely monitors international payments, banking, and credit card transactions under the auspices of an international branch called Follow the Money, FTM, and that the spy agency has full access to the Visa and SWIFT payment systems. So they're using any possible reason to get into people's bank accounts. Don't use banks. It's that simple. Um, and if you do, then just be, oh, everything's going to be fine. It's not going to happen to me. When it does, just remember that the uh, the guy in the Santa hat warned you to uh, not do that. Let's see if anybody else notices. This little mushroom cloud right there. Does not bother anybody? It'll bother you even more when you hear this. Um, Chinese moon display contains the image of Europe being nuked. Paul Joseph Watson, InfoWars. This is where the people confuse exactly what libertarians believe. We do not believe that you need to go starting a war. 
However, you're going to start wanting to throw nukes. I mean, granted, this is Europe. But you're going to you're going to want to start tossing nukes around. You will find that if you push a libertarian, they will push you back, and they will probably win. China here. At first, they said they thought the picture was stock footage. It's just a mistake. It's stock footage, except that it was named. Anyway, you, I'll get to it in a minute. It, it was, its name implied exactly what it was, a nuclear explosion or error. A display to promote China's jade rabbit moon rover includes a background photograph of a mushroom cloud over Europe, a startling detail which some have interpreted as an indication that Beijing's space program is a cover for a militarization of space. They've already said they wanted to build the moon into a Death Star. Just because it was a stupid sentence doesn't mean I'm not serious about it. The image, which was used as a backdrop to an exhibit for China's recently deployed U-2 rover, clearly shows a nuclear explosion occurring over Eastern Europe, with some speculating that the location eerily matches that of the planned U.S. missile defense system in Romania. And of course, our greedy nation just sent all of our jobs to China, and there's nothing we can do but cower to them now because we can't make anything without them. The photograph was not designed deliberately for the moon rover display. It was taken from a stock image. The fact has been cited by those who claim that the selection of the image was mere oversight on behalf of Chinese officials. Okay, let's shut the show down. It was a mistake. However, the title of the stock image, Nuclear Explosion on Earth from Space, has prompted cynical observers to suggest otherwise. Oh, 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 me. I don't notice that it's saying nuclear explosion on Earth over space, boss. Me sorry. There are undoubtedly those who will interpret the choice of image as a deliberate gesture, writes Robert Gonzalez. I wonder why. China, having been denied membership in the multinational partnership that operates the International Space Station, why would we ever want them to do that, has managed to forge an increasingly impressive space program on its own. NASA, for instance, is banned by Congress from any contract, uh, collaborations, or partnerships with China. That's because they steal things. And they talk about nuking us, primarily due to concerns about the technology's transfer, a fact that is made for some squatting observations about China's rise to ascendancy. Well, there you go, friends. Uh, was it a mistake? You can decide for yourself. I, for one, am definitely one of those skeptics. I, this was a deliberate thing, I believe, in every instance. And uh, again, we need to quit feeding the Chinese with all of the American talent and let them fold under their own weight because they'd never be able to make it without us. The only reason we think they can make it now is we send them jobs to exploit their own people over. Friends, go to mediaspeaks.com, the media speaks, and click on Bud K. When you do, you're going to want to check some. I can't say what I bought at Bud K because I bought them for people on my Christmas list and they haven't. It's not Christmas yet. So I don't want them to watch this show and then find out what I got them. But I did do shopping at Bud K. And I'm going to give you some uh, cool items I've just seen scrolling around. The Crossman Vigilante Air Pistol, $46.99. Excellent sporting device if you know anyone can do it. Um, anybody that throws darts, how about knives? Skull Master Knife Target Set, $24.99. It's at Bud K. Um, oh, one more, what the hell. Secure Pro Credit Card Lock Pick Set, only $9.99. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K. Also, remember that the correct views is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. So when you're in Canton, Ohio, you want something delicious to eat, you want to go to the Arcadia Grill. They have some of the Best spaghetti uh, meatball meatballs the size of bowling balls. Go the go to the Arcadia Grill. Let them know Sam sent you. Get a 151 and Coke and enjoy whatever's on it. The huge screen right in front of you at the Arcadia Grill. Friends, a few more stories before I hop off here. This is from a Business Insider. Elizabeth Warren wants to ban companies from using credit checks on potential employees. I don't know a lot about her, but she's on my good list. Uh, I hope Santa brings her a real nice gift. Uh, this is, why in the world does a person's credit history imply what kind of person they are? Now, you could argue if they are, uh, like I went through a bankruptcy, 
But I didn't have big screen TVs and new cars. I just worked for greedy bastard people like Fred Nero. Yes, I said it. That didn't pay anything. And when you owe 60 in bills just to live, and you only have 40, then you can't do much about it. I know there are people that go bankrupt because they're incredibly irresponsible. You could argue that those people could, could uh, make for a bad employee. But the point is, a person's finances are to be left to them and those who need to know. And your employer does not need to know. That is why Elizabeth Warren is on the nice list. Senator Elizabeth Warren introduced a bill today that would prevent companies from using credit card reports in a hiring decision. Love you. Well, at least in this issue. Not only know what else I'll read about her in the future. Since the Great Depression, many unemployed Americans have struggled to find a job once employers check their credit history. Many of these people fell on hard times after the housing bubble burst or faced an unforeseen medical issue. This was 08. Well, I mean, uh, the 08 crash, but there was also, of course, the Great Depression. Warren argues that since research has shown that a person's credit report has no indication on their job performance, companies shouldn't be allowed to use them in evaluating applicants. A bad credit rating is far more often the result of unexpected medical costs, not your fault, unemployment, usually not your fault, economic downturns, definitely not your fault, or other bad breaks than is a reflection of an individual's character or ability, she said. God bless her this Christmas Eve. Family, families have not fully recovered from the 08 financial crisis, and too many Americans are still searching for jobs. It makes no sense to make it harder for people to get jobs because of a system of credit reporting that has no correlation with job performance and that can be riddled with inaccuracies. God love it. Warren is right that this has hurt many Americans looking for jobs, but another potentially more worrisome problem with firms using credit reports and hiring decisions is that they use them to discriminate against applicants. For instance, the Department of Labor won a case against Bank of America, no surprise there, don't bank, in 2010 for its use of credit checks to discriminate against African Americans for entry positions. In the studies showed that if studies showed that credit reports were a good proxy for an applicant's job performance, then Congress would need to crack down on the discriminatory practices without banning the use of credit reports in hiring decisions. Yeah, like someone's really going to read them fairly anyway, if your boss even knows how to read them fairly. They know whether or not, take your average boss, he doesn't know whether or not how to read a credit report in terms of whether or not it was your fault or not, so he needs to keep his nose out of it. It says, given that research shows otherwise, Congress can ban the practice altogether and ensure that companies cannot use credit reports as a roundabout way to discriminate while also reducing the company's ability to evaluate job applicants. Wonderful to hear. Guys, this is a real short story, but the picture is worth a thousand words on this one, if ever. What this says, in a case uh, you're not able to read it, I will read it to you. It says, a full border fence with barbed wire, armed guards, and towers to keep illegals from crossing in from Guatemala and sucking the country dry. But the USA is evil for protecting its southern border. There you go, people. I love this. It's uh, Ron Oliver. It is posted on InfoWars. That barbed wire fence, armed guards, towers to keep the Guatemalans out of Mexico's southern border. That's how Mexico treats people. We want to do something like that to Mexicans, and we are racist in America. Well, then, I think they're pretty racist against Guatemalans in Mexico. What do you think about that? Ha! Last thing I'm going to get to, um, uh, this threat of threat, danger of dangers. Get ready for a terrifying picture. I, I, I should have put a, a warning on this. This is terror. That is a stuffed monkey. <laughs> Michael Thalen, InfoWars.com. Dunst of the day. Dunst of the day right here. TSA confiscates realistic two-inch toy pistol from Sock Monkey. 
A Washington State woman traveling from St. Louis to Seattle was shocked and embarrassed after TSA agents confiscated her Sock Monkeys 2-inch toy pistol. Phyllis May, owner and creator of the cowboy Sock Monkey, Rooster Monkburn, hoped to bring several of her toy creations as well as her sewing kit on board for the Wednesday flight home. While going through the airport screening process, May quickly discovered her carry-on bag to be missing. Shortly after, she looked up to find her bag confiscated in the hands of the TSA. The TSA agent held it up and said, whose is this? May told King 5 News, I realized, oh my god, that is my bag. After digging through May's possessions, the TSA officers located Muckburn's trusted sidearm, immediately confronting May over the discovery. She said, this is a gun. I said, no, that's a prop for my monkey, May said. I love May. Incredibly, the TSA agent went on to claim that the toy pistol was so realistic that no one would be able to tell the miniature toy gun from the real one. She said, if I held it up to your neck, you wouldn't know if it was real or not, May said. The toy gun was quickly confiscated from the deadly monkey. But not before TSA agents threatened to call the police, alleging that TSA protocol required them to do so. And I said, really? You're kidding, right? And she said, no, it looks like a gun, May said. So I said, go ahead. Amazingly, TSA decided not to carry the already ridiculous situation any further, opting to let May go ahead without police involvement. The miniature toy pistol would stay in TSA custody. He's been known to flip. Rooster Monkburn has been disarmed, so I'm sure everyone on the plane will be safe, May said sarcastically. I understand she was doing her job, but at some point, doesn't common sense prevail? No! You're in America! Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Um, every month, a dunce cap of the month goes out. Let me know what your favorite dunce cap of the month was from last year. There's 12 of them. And I will go ahead and uh, pick one of you who voted to win a Passing Time CD, which I will mail to you, and a um, uh, two months of your favorite charity promoted on this show. So uh, let me know what your favorite one was and get ready because it's almost the beginning of January and we will have a Dunce Cap of the Month Award going out. Um, for those of you that don't know, I mail Dunce Caps to people and certificates, letting them know how stupid they are and what they've won and why. Um, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look at the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. And if you get a chance, friends, make sure that you do eat at the delicious Arcadia Grill. Good night, friends. God bless. And I'm going to engage in hate speech. Merry Christmas. God bless you.